Hey, hi. I hope all of you are doing well. Now the next set of questions that I got and uh, that is what I've tried to club in this answer is what are the projects that I target for data science and machine learning? So a lot of you might have become proficient in machine learning algorithms like uh, say coding a decision tree from scratch or implementing a logistic regression uh, say following up with a lot of examples on Kaggle going through different Kaggle kernels participating in a lot of online hackathons which are either conducted on Kaggle or the other platforms which are there. A lot of companies appreciate that if you can say independently pick up projects and try to create solutions around it. This essentially is a very daunting question. It's not a very simple question to answer. It's a question that can either make or break your resume shortlisting. So what are the projects that I should actually pick up that will not only help me learn new technologies but also add value to my resume. Now this is a very say important question to answer. So I'll kind of break this question down into chunks and then I'll kind of help you understand how you can tie back the chunks that I've kind of thrown at you. The first thing that I want to mention is everyone's an applied data scientist. So essentially Whatever you're doing, you're not implementing algorithms from scratch every day. So if I tell you to implement a classifier in XGBoost, everyone's using a scikit-learn package. Or if I tell you to implement an object detection algorithm or an object classification algorithm using TensorFlow, then essentially you're not writing the end-to-end -end code of writing or creating tensors. Uh, how do you say do the mini batch processing and all of that. So you kind of working at the application level. Yes, even that is very challenging. I don't deny that. But essentially what differentiates you from the others is the kind of projects that you choose. Now, how do you choose a project is what I would describe as answering a question or trying to solve a problem. Remember, I keep repeating in my videos that data science and machine learning are essentially tools to help you solve problems. Some may be business problems. Some may be research oriented problems, but essentially everyone's trying to solve a problem. So essentially, if you have an issue in your life, if you have an issue with a particular say set of activities that you do, and if you want to either automate it or maybe optimize it, that is where you fall back to technology or automation or machine learning or data science to kind of solve that problem for you. So essentially what you're trying to do is you're trying to solve a problem using data. The data may be that of images, the data may be that of audio, the data may be that of say textual files, the data may also be structured or unstructured depending on what you're trying to solve. So essentially all of those things that you kind of think of are numbers in one way or the other. Now essentially if you're trying to say come up with solutions for numbers, you need a very solid problem statement to kind of say jump around or juggle around with those numbers. So that is where selecting a project comes in handy. Now, how do you select a project? I cannot give you like one answer because essentially then everyone would kind of try to tackle the same question that has been solved or is being solved. What I would encourage you to do is do your bit of research and understand what are the places where you feel data science and machine learning can come in. Trust me when I say this, although ML has made its way in a lot of technologies, there are a lot of places where ML can still fit the bill for a lot of applications. So essentially what you have to do is you have to find that application. Now in order to find an application or in order to say find a solution, you have to come and derive a question. A problem statement is what matters the most. So just to give you a context, I'll give you a simple example in terms of a project that I executed, which was nowhere related to any of the organizations that I've worked for so far. So in 2013, when I was a final year engineering student, I did my master's and bachelor's in electronics. So essentially I come from the whole, uh, say microcontroller era where I kind of programmed a lot of microcontroller devices in C, C++. So coming from that background, uh, one project that I kind of worked on in my final year was creating a calculator for blind people. So for people who cannot see, ideally that doesn't mean that their life stops at that particular situation. So the solution that I created back in 2013 using electronics, using stepper motors, microcontrollers was a braille calculator. So the way the project works is uh, given a person who is visually impaired, uh, he cannot see what numbers are there in the calculator. 
we kind of embossed braille digits on the corresponding digits so for example 8 is represented in a certain format in braille so you have different representations for different numbers so by touching at a button the person can actually realize that this is number 8 this is number 5 and so on and so forth so you have the number piece which was kind of taken care by the embossings the calculation was done using a microcontroller and then we had stepper motors so again the output of the calculation should be in form of like something that the person can actually touch and feel so essentially we created motors that rotate based on the solution so if my output is say 399 then essentially the first stepper motor won't move at all because the value is zero so whatever we implemented was for say four digits so the first stepper motor won't move uh, the second stepper motor would move by three units so the person who is kind of trying to touch and feel the result would say that this is 0, this is 3, this is 9 and this is 9 as well. So, so people who had this visual impairment could actually make a, a sound application out of this device that we created. But uh, this goes back to 2013 that I created and then life kind of kept moving on. I joined organizations, I kind of worked with different organizations. So this project had taken a seat back. So in the first week of 2020, with now having some knowledge in machine learning and deep learning, I thought of implementing the same solution but in a different format right now. So think of now not the numbers, not just the numbers I would say, but the characters as well. So for people who have braille transcripts with them, that is essentially transcripts which are written entirely keeping the visually impaired people in mind, uh, they have embossings for say rows as well as columns. So that you can kind of touch and feel which letter you are on and then uh, the person would actually understand the word or the paragraph or the entire document as well by just touching the entire sheet. Uh, obviously you'll have to go one letter and one word at a time but uh, that kind of solves its purpose in terms of being up to date in terms of what is happening. So if you want to read a newspaper then essentially you have to have a braille version of the newspaper as well. So keeping all of this in mind I thought of creating a solution around this. Uh, I went to a couple of websites, I kind of uh, said downloaded say braille embossing based images. Uh, I did some data augmentation. Now one of the biggest challenges in this problem statement was to augment data. Uh, the embossings are such that if you rotate one embossing uh, say after say 40-45 degrees then essentially that embossing becomes a different letter altogether. So I had to be very careful in terms of how much augmentation I have to do. Uh, I created a convolutional neural network out of it and then whatever output that I get is again based on one letter at a time. So I had to do image segmentation to filter out each letter, take or capture each letter, pass it to the uh, say the model that I had created, uh, extract the output and then join it in form of a sentence. Now given a transcript, I have the sentence in mind. Then I use Google text to speech to convert that to audio. So for a person who cannot see, what he essentially needs is a smartphone. He will capture the image of the transcript and automatically he'll kind of hear the output of that transcript in form of audio using Google Assistant. So I've not yet implemented the Google Assistant part or the Android application part, but the, the place where my expertise hold true, that is creating models uh, using Python smartly is what I've kind of used to create a project on my own. So this is something that I've kept trying at my end. I kind of pick up different problems that can make an impact, not necessarily business, but you're trying to solve something like uh, say uh, creating solutions based on uh, different problem statements that you get, which are not readily available on Kaggle. So Kaggle is something that your problem statement is fixed and your target is also fixed. But uh, if you have to come up with innovative projects, then you have to think out of the box. Uh, so think of different applications that you think may fit in different industries. Uh, say the solution can be as complex as using a very deep learning based approach or you can even use simple say uh, machine learning methods to build a classifier that can give you an output which no one has kind of thought about. So the idea or the question of choosing a project is something that still uh, is not something that anyone can give you an answer for. It is something that you kind of think from your past experiences. Uh, this is something that you'll have to be aware in terms of your say surrounding. And once you are very clear that this is what I'm trying to solve, then all of the whole model building process, creating a model, deploying it end to end would all fall in place. 
the biggest hurdle that a lot of you would face is the project detection part which is where a good candidate is shortlisted over the other candidate now i leave the question still back to you in terms of what is it that one thing that you want in your day to day life that can make an impact uh, be it a simple classifier that you can think of or be it a complex deep learning model like a real time object detection system that you can think of don't think of every fancy thing think of simple things that you can say either automate or you can add in your workflow and then see the magic that that solution can create so that is something that i can recommend in terms of selecting the right project for data science and machine learning yes i have not given you an answer because essentially uh, the the whole journey of data science and machine learning is yours uh, it's something that you'll have to really fight for it is something that you'll have to struggle with uh, it's okay to not get the solution in one go uh, i kind of spent say not less than 2 to 3 weeks in getting the entire solution stitched up correctly so essentially don't feel bad if you fail it's okay to fail everyone fails but uh, what basically say describes you or uh, something that differentiates you over the others is your ability to get up after you fail so keep trying keep thinking about different projects uh, keep thinking about how you can make say x person's life easy by introducing machine learning or deep learning in their workflow So this was all that I had in terms of describing what projects you should pick up for data science and machine learning. I hope you found this video informative. If you do like the content on my channel, then please consider clicking the subscribe button to be notified for future videos. Thank you so much for watching.